If you're planning a Disney cruise, this video is just for you because we're gonna give you the tips and tricks you need to know to make sure you can secure reservations for special onboard activities, adult dining, and the excursions, or what Disney calls port adventures, to make sure you have a wonderful cruise. And we're also gonna go over the information you need to know to do the online check-in so you can make sure you can get on the ship as soon as possible instead of waiting around when your boarding day finally does come. So let's dive in. Hey there, my name is Eric D, and on this channel my hope is always to make your next Disney adventure a little bit more magical with tips and tricks, food reviews, and news. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. But after you make your initial reservations for a Disney cruise, there are two dates you need to keep in mind when you get to make additional reservations or get your port arrival time. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And if you've already done part of this and you're just wondering about the port arrival time, look at the time codes down below because I marked it off so you can know where to jump ahead. But the first date you need to be aware of is when you can start making reservations for things like the Palo Dining or Remy Dining, some of the special adult restaurants for spa treatments or for the port adventures. When you arrive at the different locations you're traveling to, if there's something special you wanna do, you wanna make sure you can get reservations for those. So the question is, why is it so important that you know when to make these reservations and that you're on top of it? There's a lot of great activities, but there are a lot of people on the ship that will be excited to do these things. And so you wanna make sure you are making reservations as soon as you can. And when you can make reservations at first depends on how many cruises you've been on with Disney. So if it's your very first time traveling with Disney, at 75 days out, you can begin making these reservations at midnight, 75 days out. Now, if you have completed one to four cruises with Disney, you are in the Silver Castaway Club and you can make reservations 90 days out. If you have completed five to nine cruises with Disney, you're at the gold level and you can make those reservations 105 days out. And if you have completed 10 to 24 cruises, you are the platinum level. But the platinum level can start making reservations at the same time as concierge, which is 120 days prior to your cruise. And this year, Disney added a whole new level, the pearl level, which is for 25 cruises and above. They haven't released all the details on any additional special privileges this group gets, but we know that they will get everything included in platinum and probably some additional benefits. But that's all we know for now. And so what are the things you can make reservations for during this first reservation period? It is things like special dining, the port adventures, spa treatments, a number of those items. And I'm gonna walk you through the process right now so you can see how that works. And keep in mind, depending on which group you are in, whether it's 75 days out, 90 days out, it is going to be midnight Eastern time when you can start doing this. So keep that in mind, whether you're in California, anywhere else across the world, know when it's going to be midnight Walt Disney World time, and that is when you can begin. And for example, if it is saying that you can begin on the 25th of the month, that is meaning that at the end of the day, the 24th, as soon as it becomes the 25th Walt Disney World time, you can do that. So staying up late on the 24th to do that. So let's walk through this process. When you get to the website and open up your reservations, you're going to go to the My Plans section. As you can see, I'm scrolling down here. I am to day four, which was our Castaway Key Day. I can now click on the Add Activities. And when I do this, I can choose what type of activities. So I wanna look at the port adventures in this situation. As you can see, it takes a little while. And one thing to keep in mind, when you are doing this, it's likely gonna be busy, so it might take the website a little while to get going. You can see all the different activities that you can select from. For this cruise, I was not selecting a really high demand thing. There is plenty of snorkel equipment, but just for an example, I'm gonna show you how to do that. You click on the port adventure you want to participate in, and then you click on which guests you want to participate in that. If you all wanted snorkel equipment, you'd click on everyone. If you just want one of you, you just click on one. And in this case, there is only one time because it's an all day event. So from 8 a.m. on, I can pick up that equipment. So it just gives me one time. On other excursions, it will give you specific times related to when they actually are available. Once you get the port adventures you want for that day, you can then go to a different day and either reserve more dining, port adventures, spa treatments, whatever it may be. And when you're booking these, you wanna keep in mind what is going to be the most high in demand thing. Oftentimes, if you are silver or brand new to Disney Cruise Line, something like Palo Brunch is the most popular item that often the reservations fill up. And so maybe that is the one you're going for first, even though that's not the first day of your cruise, or maybe not everyone in your group is going for it. If that's the one that you think is gonna be the most popular, definitely go for that one first. So don't waste your time grabbing the 
photo package, unlimited, you know, photos. Oh, got to get that first. No, there's going to be plenty of unlimited photo packages. That's not going to run out. But Palo Brunch is going to. So I would recommend going for that one first or whatever is most important to you and your family. If you do stay up till midnight to try and get these reservations as soon as you possibly can, one thing you will find is a lot of people are on the website at that time. So it's going to move slow and be a little rough at times. So if at first you click on something, it doesn't load, hit reload, keep trying because sometimes it takes 10, 15 minutes, but you can still get those things even if they look full at first. Sometimes it's just a website is trying to work through all the people or maybe someone grabs something and then they give it back because they decide they want something at a different time. So keep on trying, don't give up if at first it's busy. And also, if you're trying to make specific reservations and you say like, oh, let's do a party of four right now, but that doesn't work on one of the reservations, try again and maybe break up the party and say two and two. I've had it before where I wasn't able to get Palo reservations at first, but then I broke up the party and we were able to get the exact same time and they were able to seat us together. So look at different options. It might be your group size that's the problem or something like that. So just try different options and see what you can make work. So once again, the reason why you would want to stay up till midnight to make these reservations either 75 days out, 90 days out, 105 days out is because you have something specific you want to make sure you reserve. You're very excited about it. You want to make sure you do it. If there's nothing along port adventures or dining that you're excited about to like make special reservations for, you're just going to experience the cruise as is. You don't need to be staying up till midnight to do that. You can look the next morning, see if there's anything that interests you. But if you're really interested in something specific, do it at midnight. Also, if you are concierge, you don't need to be doing this because you reach out to the concierge people and they kind of reserve those things without you having to stay up late at night and reserving that. So there's a bonus there. Now let's talk about the official check-in process you can do 30 days before your cruise. And what this is getting you is your official port arrival time. So on the day that your cruise begins, you need to have a specific time of when you can arrive to the port and you'll also get a boarding group of when you can get on the ship. And so lots of people want to have the earliest time possible because they figure the sooner they're on the ship, the sooner their vacation can begin. And so once again, this is not something that you have to do if you are saying, hey, I'm arriving at 1.30 or 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm not stressed about getting there at 11, 11.30. Then maybe you don't want to stay up late for this. But if you do want to try for that earlier time, I definitely recommend staying up till midnight Eastern time to get this 30 days out. And once again, for example, if your cruise is saying that on the 5th, you can register 30 days out, it is saying on the 4th, as the 4th turns into the 5th, that is when you can do it Walt Disney World time midnight. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to walk you through the process of what you need to do. So at midnight Walt Disney World time, 30 days out, you will go to your reservation and stay on the cruise details page and scroll down to the online check-in portion where you can then click check-in. You'll get to this page where you can click the button that says begin check-in. This page is going to walk you through the different steps that you need to complete for each guest to be able to do your online check-in. As you can see on the left hand side here it has the outline of Goofy's face and it says guest information. I'm going to click on my name first to begin this process. And as you can see, I need to enter basic information like my street address, the city, state, zip code, my email address, and my phone number. Scrolling down, it lets me put my preferred language, an emergency contact. This needs to be someone who is not on the cruise with you. So hopefully a family member or friend that is back at home, jealous that they are not on the cruise with you probably. And then if it is the case that everyone in your party will be using the same emergency contact, you can click on their name there now we're down to the identification section. I am going to be using a passport and so it is asking me to upload an image of a passport. For the cruise I was on, I could have also been using a birth certificate and a driver's license, but depending on which cruise you're traveling on, where you're from and what location, the documentation you can use can vary. So make sure you check in with Disney on those things. But in this case, I was using my passport. So I click the upload photo on the passport section. After you upload the image of your passport, it shows a thumbnail of it above and sometimes I've had it pull in the information where it will pull in my name, last name, ID number and everything. Sometimes it doesn't pull in that information. So you need to put it all in by hand. After you upload your passport and type in all that information, you need to submit a security photo. And this can just be a photo of yourself from the shoulders up, ideally on kind of a white background, no hats on or anything like that, but just something. So when you are getting on and off the ship, they can tell, yes, this is who you are. It's very smart to have these pictures all taken beforehand so you're not having to rush 
in the middle of the night getting family members to take pictures or send those pictures to you or whatever, just have them all ready beforehand and make sure they are probably PNG or JPEG. I know sometimes iPhones can take higher quality photos, but that was taking too long to load the last time I did this. So just make sure you have a reasonable JPEG or PNG. After you've uploaded that photo, it will show a thumbnail of that. And then you are to the bottom of the screen where you can click save and it will save that for you. If everyone in your party is using the same home address and also the same emergency contact, you can just reuse that information, but you do still have to upload the documentation for each guest and also a photo of them. So I would do that for Tyler next. As you can see right now, it's showing that it's incomplete because I only have my information in there right now. Then next it goes to the onboard account. And what this is, is you need to put in a credit card number for all charges throughout the cruise. You also select at this time if you will be paying for the other people in your party and also if you're granting them charging privileges. So in this case, I just put my credit card down and I was trusting that Tyler would pay me back later, which he did. If you have younger family members, maybe you want to say you will be paying for them, but you will not be granting them charging privileges. So the kids won't be able to go and buy treats on their own, charging it to their card, but you would have to be with them to get that. And then you have to do that guest authorization where you are assuming responsibility for all the amounts incurred during the cruise. Now, if you have any guests 10 years or younger traveling with you, there is an additional section that you would fill out right now this is to let Disney know if you are authorizing anyone to check your children kind of off the ship. For example, if there is a port adventure and a grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle are going to take them off the ship, but you are going to stay on the ship, you would be authorizing that at this time. You would also be filling out for the kids club if they can check themselves in and check themselves out, or if it's one of those things where for them to exit the kids club, you need to be notified and you need to come and check them out. It's a really short section and easy to fill out, but it's just important so you make that decision of if they are allowed to check themselves out of the kids club and also who has authority to take them off the ship. Next is time for the travel plans. And as you can see here, the first question is asking how I am going to be arriving to the port. So it's asking if I'm flying in or if I am driving there. And as soon as I say that, yes, we are flying there, it gives me additional questions to fill out as far as which airline we're taking, which flight number and which city we'll be arriving in. This is all information you want to make sure you have on hand when it is time to fill this out because you don't want to be digging through your old emails trying to find what your flight number is and what time of day it is. You want to have all that information ready. You'll also fill out the information for the outgoing flight when you'll leave. And if you are driving to the port, of course, you are going to answer these questions differently and you'll have to provide a little bit different information as far as um, your travel information there. But this is just to make sure that they know where you're coming from and where you're going afterwards. So when we were leaving, we were saying we were leaving the port using a rental car and we were going to use um, the specific service and everything that we listed there. And then so you only have to fill this out once. You can mark down that all your travel people are having the same plans as you are. After you filled out your guest information, your onboard account, the children information and your travel plans, you are finally able to unlock the port arrival time. And this is the big thing that you want to be able to get if you want that earlier time. So as you can see, when I got on here, the earliest time available was 1115. So I grab that as quick as I could and I click continue and then it is going to take you to the cruise contract. And as you can see, as you scroll through this giant contract, you need to get to the bottom of this and then say you agree to the cruise contract. Once you do this, you will get your port arrival form. And what this is used for is when you arrive at the port, they will scan this and then you will be able to enter into the port to begin the security process. And they give you the option to print it out and also they give you the option to send it to your phone and so i of course being who i am i had them do both so i had a hard copy and also i had it on my phone ready to go the other thing to keep in mind that happens at 30 days out is that special character greetings that require reservations like the royal greeting with the princesses or if you're on a pixar cruise or marvel cruise those special reserved character greetings are also released at midnight 30 days out and so it may be the case if the princess greetings are the most important thing for you, first go and select the time you want for those princess greetings. And it is the same process as getting a port adventure or getting um, Palo dining reservations. Go and reserve those and then worry about uploading all of your images to get your port arrival time. I can guarantee that the website will struggle. I can guarantee that the app will be slow if you're using the app. Personally, I like to use my laptop so I can just type it all out. I usually have another document that I have already put a lot of the information in so I can just copy and paste. I am quicker on my laptop than I am with the app. 
But if you are quicker using your phone, go for that, whatever works best for you. But just know that either or might be having problems just because so many people are on the website at the same time trying to fill out the information. So it's gonna be a little bit frustrating. It's gonna be annoying. So prepare yourself for that. But if you can work through that first 10, 15 minutes of it being annoying, usually it smooths out after that. Or if you are not worried about princess greetings, if you're not worried about an early portal arrival time, enjoy a good night's sleep and just handle it the next morning. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a like. In the comments down below, I would love to hear your tips and tricks for getting those reservations secured that you want to or any questions you have on this process. And now that you know how to secure these reservations and also get your port arrival time, why don't you check out some of my other videos where I tour the ship and also give reviews of the restaurants. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see y'all again real soon. Bye.